Hi everyone. Uh, today we have uh, we are starting our another lecture, which is related with the reservoir simulation, and uh, we will discuss. We would actually start our basic programming of Python. Uh, it's a computer programming needed for reservoir engineers. Now, the first question comes here. That uh, yeah, the first question uh, comes here in mind that why the Python is important for reservoir engineers and uh, reservoir simulation engineers. This is the first question, and why this Python is included in the course of reservoir simulation. Well, uh, the first thing in order to discuss this, I would like to introduce the concept of Internet of Things. Well, using the IoT, nowadays our pressure, temperature, injection pressures, whatever parameters you have on the well or on the offshore platforms or on the pipelines, whatever parameters, you can get the live updates on your mobile phones as well as on your databases as well as on your computer. You can get the live data. Now, huge number of data is generated huge number of data is generated now it's not like what we had before few years ago where uh, if you are hiring someone as a production engineer and he is recording the uh, the production rate and pressure and temperature and then manually sending it to head office no no not anymore now we have internet everything is connected and the live updates are going on and live recordings are going on everywhere on the wells this and they are very cheap to use china is producing and so on this is the first thing second thing the python it is very important for reservoir simulation engineers to learn and uh, most of the u.s jobs the uh, reservoir engineering jobs in u.s and canada the right now they need uh, reservoir engineers with the background of programming or if you go to big companies like aramco saudi aramco or other chevron and shell those who have head offices in london or or texas they are using reservoir simulation engineers and, and those engineers must have the background of programming, especially Python, R or any other tool that they are good with that. So today first we will see that what is the reason uh, why we need uh, Python for uh, uh, reservoir simulation engineers. And then we will start our basic programming skills. Uh, we will learn Python starting from very basic let's say start writing your name from that and uh, gradually we will develop some uh, skills in python and then we will apply them in reservoir engineering and later on finally we will apply them in reservoir simulation as a final uh, project for uh, this course so let's start with it first of all let's look at this picture it's a very nice picture and this kind of picture i showed you in lecture number one also now here in this picture you can see that how many grid blocks you have if you start counting let's say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 28 see how many layers it has and how many the the length of this it has now this reservoir could be in kilometers or in big long or in uh, 10 or 20 kilometers or 50 kilometers it's, it's really huge now the question is how you selected the location of this well i mean this is the well here why you put the well here why not here why not here or why not there or what is the depth exactly where you put the perforation this is the question like what is the exactly good location for it now if you start looking for the production let's say you have this well you put it in, in this grid block in here you could you could put it here also or you could put this well here also or maybe here also or maybe here also or maybe here also or maybe here also now if you put this well in each of the grid block and try to find the production an optimum production or the maximum production or good production well it will take a lot of time it will be very very complicated and very much time consuming and a uh, lot of skills are required so what we do we introduce the concept of python or programming we develop our algorithm we connect it with the software like cmg and eclipse once the simulation is finished the algorithm actually change the parameters and put the well in another grid block 
and it keep changing it keep changing unless you get the highest rate of production so the programming algorithm helps you to identify exactly where you can put the optimum location for production wells this is one of the the major uh, development or major change in reservoir simulation engineering studies is coming in the in the coming years now let's look at the other uh, scenario where the python programming could be algorithms can be helpful to you now this is a simple five spot water injection uh, scenario we have one production wells here you can see and then we have uh, four injection wells one two three and four this is we call it five spot injection of water now now the point is that again why you put the location of the well at this point you could put it here or you could put it here or you could put it here or you could put i mean the distance of injection to production matters and uh, because what is the objective of five spot is to enhance the pressure so that we can get the production that's the main objective so now in this thing the first parameter that is important is the distance of production to injection well how you can uh, identify the optimum and right location again this needs a huge study for example this is a very small blocks you can see maybe it has 200 or few hundred cells but in reality the cells are more and grid blocks are more the reservoirs are big so it's very hard and uh, it's very time consuming to 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 do this simulation studies being a reservoir simulation engineer so what you can do in this case you can develop your algorithm on python and uh, uh, you can develop your algorithm on python and uh, let it automate you let it check each grid block automatically and uh, then it will give you the final result based on uh, machine learning uh, tools based on machine learning tools so in the end you can have a very good location for injection well and good injection to production ratio for the successful recovery then let's look at the another water alternating gas injection uh, let's many you there are many ur methods as you know we have water alternating gas injection, we have water injection, we have CO2 injection, we have polymer injection, in situ injection, we inject chemicals, we have, uh, so we have lots of options we have. We have smart water nowadays, nowadays we are injecting nanobots and we have so many options of uh, enhanced oil recovery. Now each uh, UR mechanism that you select, it has its own parameter. Let's say water alternating gas injection, what matters, what parameter matters in this one? For example, first thing which matters in this case, again, the distance between injection to production well. This is the uh, thing that matters. Then after that, then the concentration of CO2. How much CO2 you are injecting? How much water you are injecting? What is the pressure, injection pressure of water? What is the injection pressure of CO2? What is the injection rate of water? What is the injection rate of CO2? So these the temperature. What is the temperature of the water? What is the temperature of the CO2 you are injecting? Are you injecting CO2 along with some other uh, additives or just simple CO2? So these parameters are actually changing. These parameters are not fixed. They need to be evaluated. And uh, not usually what we do in our simulation study, we just select few of them based on our uh, calculations and we, uh, tell, we obtain them, we run the simulation. Actually, now what we can do, we using the algorithm, again, we can check a long range of pressures that you can help us to identify the right injection pressure and so on. And as the, as you know, the reservoir, we call it alive. Reservoir is alive, the process is alive, and, you know, the situation is changing in the reservoir day by day. So if day by day is changing, it means we have to adjust the pressure or parameters for bag injection on a regular basis. Okay, if not daily, at least weekly or monthly we have to update those parameters so and based on what composition we are receiving what production we are receiving it is based on if production is declining if production is constant if production is increasing so we update our parameters of them so in this case again the algorithms can be generated and uh, that can uh, analyze those parameters on regular basis the results can be saved in the databases and it, a closed loop system can be generated using the python and so on so this is these are the, some of the examples that I shared that why Python is important for a reservoir simulation engineer. But there are many other reasons. And drilling engineering, these are the examples of reservoir engineering. But if you go for drilling engineering, if you go for production engineering, right now with the latest technologies, Python is unavoidable. 
so those especially who are doing uh, interested in their PhDs uh, we used to say that mathematical modeling and experimentation uh, are the parts of PhD and petroleum engineering before but no more now you have to adjust the programming somewhere also so now Python mathematical modeling experimentation if these three are together then you are a skillful PhD petroleum engineer which is needed by the oil industry in the coming time so this is time is coming that's why the we, we encourage all petroleum engineers all uh, to learn python to learn programming and try to apply in oil in, in, in studies so when you go for to work for big companies or you go for academy or research you can take the advantage of python and those powerful programming and machine learning tools so they can help you to identify uh, to help you to optimize the production of oil and gas